Welcome back, Stingers. Surprise, surprise. Another live stream. And I'm having some melon for dinner. Mmm. <laughs> That's some important stuff I'm gonna talk about. Whoever's not in can catch this. I'm gonna post it to YouTube as usual. Hi guys. Here we go. So when I get home, all right, say hello so I know you guys are here. There we go. When I get home, I like to, to dim things down. Dim the lights, you know? Light my candle. This one smells like a very rich man. Oh my gosh. Rich man in a, in a nice outfit who's respectable. <laughs> Who knows how to uh, pull out the chair and open the, and run to open the damn door. That's what that candle smell like. Oh my gosh. Huh. Uh. When I saw it in the store, I said, I gotta have that shit. Oh. It's amber and sandalwood. Can you guys see me? So if you're not on my Instagram, I posted a picture because I was out today in the cemetery between doing laundry. I like to exercise, like put the laundry in, go run, you know what I mean? Put it in the dryer, go run, things like that. And I was in the cemetery and I was thinking about energy and how we share energy. And the cemetery is one of my favorite places because everybody's dead. And the thing about death is that when you die or what people call die is you release all of your resistance you release everything and i think the energy is so beautiful there because nobody's uptight in fear worried you know what i mean secretly jealous and all that shit they're just level they don't care they don't care i was thinking about Scorpios, in terms of sharing energy. We're a relationship sign, but we like our relationships deep. And everybody's not deep. Everybody's not deep. And so you guys end up sharing energy, just, just giving out your energy all over the damn place. All over the place. You're on Instagram, you're scrolling, through numerous accounts, you don't know these people, but you're on an hour a day. That's, you know how much energy, that, that concentration of just scrolling and scrolling and thinking about it and sharing it and talking about it. Imagine if you did that with something that, you know, you was trying to accomplish. You know what I mean? Like at night, I like to do my writing. That's when my brain really opens. And I put on my horror music and I go in. I have a couple of you guys' charts that I'm gonna do I'm completing one and then I'm working on another one. I like to do that at night where I'm so receptive to, you know, really strong energy. I put on my slasher music, you know what I mean? And, and, and I get working. And so I know sometimes you guys get bored and you want to talk to your exes. I don't, <laughs> but you do. You want to be on the phone with the ex. You want to be on this Snapchat thing or whatever these silly little apps are. And you're just giving yourself out for free, for nothing. And these people don't even care. Some of you right now are in bed with your phones next to a person who doesn't give a fuck. I was thinking about energy and enemies, close enemies. People who are the closest. Sometimes you think enemies are far away. You're like, oh, I can't stand that person. I don't fuck with them. I don't fuck with that. Those aren't the people you need to worry about. The people you share the most energy with are the ones, and they're closer than you think. <laughs> they're right in your bedroom. They're in your closet. They're under your bed right now. No. Um, they pay your bills. You have kids with them. You know what I mean? These are people who have all your information. They've learned you over the years. You've given yourself, you've opened yourself up. 
They have all the little keys and the passcodes and things. They know your triggers. You know, these are the ones who could pull the rug from under your feet. These are the ones you need to you need to really be aware of. You really need to be aware of. I had to pull back my energy from people who had access to me in that way. I had to pull back my energy because I noticed over the years, they got a little sloppy. They got a little sloppy. They started digging things up, resurrecting things. And I was like, oh, that's where we are. Okay, I think you have a little too much access and you don't know what to do with it. Sometimes they don't know what to do with it. Do you know what I'm saying? You guys know what I'm talking about? Motherfuckers got a little too much access to me. A little too much access. And they don't know what to do with it. Hmm. Some of them are even your relatives. A lot of them, I bet, are your relatives. These are the people, and not all of them. I'm not saying that all the people you're dating and all this, they're, they're malicious. What I'm telling you is that you have to be aware of where you're, how you're dispersing your energy. Is it necessary for you to chit chat with the people in the street? Is it really called for? You know what I mean? Is it necessary for you to be on social media, running your mouth? Like, what is that for? How come you're not putting that in a, in a place that's important, right? And what you're really doing is opening yourself up a little bit to people. Now they got a piece of you that you can never get back. You don't know how they're going to use that. You got to be aware. I've been being, you know, more aware of that these days. All right. <laughs> Wait, what are you having for dinner? Because this is what we're doing. And then we got a salad. If this is not enough, we got a salad. See, I don't, I'm a little eccentric. My stove stays unplugged. It only gets plugged in during the winter time. We do mostly raw food. Or if I cook something, it's like a pasta or something, but I'm not, it's like, it's too hot for me. I don't, I don't cook food, period. We get melons, mangoes, and all sorts of other stuff or we have a juice for dinner. <laughs> and I got a little salad that we just chopped up that we about to, we about to handle that. So this is what we're doing. Hmm. Listen guys, your energy is so vital. Every see, I was thinking about that too because there's another stinger who lives down the street. When I was bringing my laundry home, she likes to sit in the door, you know? And we chit chat a little bit, but our chit chats are nice. Do you know what I mean? Like I can tell it's like a real chit chat. She's born a couple days after me and I say, hi, we don't do too much. We understand that we don't do too much. We give a little bit, you know what I mean? And then that's it. A little bit and that's it. We don't get too personal. Like, oh, how long have you been living here? Or what you, you know what I mean? Like you got a man? And we, no, 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 no. We don't do that. We don't do that. Once you start exchanging all that shit. Ooh, gets tricky, gets tricky. Mm. <laughs> Don't laugh at my juice for dinner. <laughs> Things get tricky, guys. Things get tricky. And you wonder why. See, this is Scorpius, because when we give energy, we just like, you know what I mean? And it's ferocious, it's like, boom, you know, like here. And somebody will take that and misplace that shit. Like, oh, look at, you know, I see it. I see it in the comments. Look at, look at my videos. Oh my gosh, she's so heavy. And like, they don't know what to do with that shit. And now they got a piece of you forever. Oof, think about it that way. I swear, I'm so, I'm so like, somebody was like, hey, today. And I just waved and kept, going. you know what I mean? I was like, well, how many words do I gonna, am I going to waste? You know what I mean? Now I started thinking about it. Like, how many words am I going to waste? How much energy am I going to waste here? You know? 
talking and you'll notice the more people talk to you, they want you to open up. They start getting too fucking personal. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. Nuts. How many of you guys go on Instagram every day and just scroll through, looking at people's shit that you don't even know them? I did that the other day and I stopped myself. I was like, wait, wait. <laughs> I could I could have written five pages by now. I don't even know these people. How are they deserving of my energy? Like, are you are you serious? Oh no, we can't do that. We can't do that. This is why I go on my phone. And I put on my timer for everything. I'm like, timer, timer. So I know how I'm spending my energy, you know? I put on, you know, an hour to write and then another hour to write or like 30 minutes, I'm in the shower, rush, but like everything is, you know, I got to know where I'm exerting that to. Am I on social media? Like who's on social media besides me? <laughs> mm -mm. No. If you start thinking at, of your energy as money, it's different. You're going to spend, everybody you talk to is $50. Now, how much money in the day are you going to spend? $50, guys. Mm -mm. Wait a minute. $50. <laughs> no, no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that no more. Another thing I want to talk about. I swear, I wish you could smell this. This smell like a billionaire, honey. Guys, amber and sandalwood. Whew. Something that triggers me about this candle. I went to the store and I, I was like, oh my gosh. And I didn't buy it at first, but I kept thinking about it. And then I had to go back and get it. It just reminds me. I don't know. I think it reminds me of my father. That's what, the, that's what it is. Yeah. You know? I mean, he wasn't super rich, but he always wore a suit. You know what I mean? Like, he opened, pulled out the chair. This is like, this. that's what it is. Thanks, Dad. Um, all right. Something else I want to talk about. It's really important. I want to talk about being kind to your younger self. There are a few things that I have that trigger me from my childhood or when I was in my 20s that I'm, I wouldn't say battling, but they come up now and again. And I realize it's not me being upset with people who did specific things to me because you guys have to understand, you guys have to understand this. People are who they are. I'm who I am and if I annoy someone, it's because they have something about me triggers something in them. I'm going to be like this regardless. People get annoyed with me all the time. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you have that personality. You're this. I'm going to be like this until I transition to the non physical. Trust me. I've had this personality since I was five years old. I just grew into it. You know, I grew into it. I found my Pluto Mars. I found them, right? People are who they are. Skeezers are skeezers. Assholes are assholes. Whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What's important is that how you handle yourself, how you forgive yourself or treat yourself, I, there's some things that happen. Now, I didn't know if I should discuss this or just I, save it for my book, but I'm going to tell you a couple of things. So when I was like in eighth grade, and I mentioned this person before, there's a Taurus girl, but she's like an Aries moon and a Leo rising. So she's like a fiery mouthy. She's always mouthy, always mouthy. And people were like low key scared of her for some, I don't know why, because she never had a fight. <laughs> her first fight, and I remember because I was at her house when she had her first fight, and I didn't even see it because I was in the house. But I think we were, oh, we were 17, and she had her first fight ever, ever. 
And she was pretty mouthy, but she really made it known that she thought she was better because people did treat her better. So that's, look, that's no fault of her own. I, I cannot be mad at her for that. When you're treated a certain way, it's a belief of yours. It is, you know? If you're always told that you're pretty or you're better, look, whose fault is that? So that's how she treated everyone, you know? Oh, I'm this and this and that. We were on the bus. We were on the bus. I don't know where we were coming back from. Was it a field trip? I don't know. I think I've blocked all that out. But I remember we sat next to each other. We got seats next to each other. And we had come back from like a deli or something. And I didn't buy anything, but she did. And she bought, and I remember it, it was like a tuna fish sandwich. And I was like always eating tuna fish back in the day when I ate animals. And she ate most of the sandwich. And there was like this much left. And she asked me, did I want it? And I said, yes. And I ate it. And that always bugs me <laughs> to this day. Oh my gosh. That all, It always bugs me to this day. Because, because I was like, now I would never, ever, you couldn't, you couldn't pay me enough in a million fucking years, <laughs> right now, take someone's eaten fucking sandwich. In fact, I think that may have triggered me that along with something else. I don't even eat sandwiches, actually. I would not touch a fucking sandwich. I promise you. I'm almost 45. I would not touch a sandwich. Do you see how these little things connect and they build? And later on in life, you have these little intricacies and you don't know where they come from. I love to connect the dots. I love to break shit down. But I remember that. And I was like, why did I take that sandwich? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why, like today, if someone was like, oh, you want half my sandwich? I'm like, no. Why the fuck are you offering me? And they could be the most, <laughs> they could be so genuine about it. And it'll trigger me to be like, how fucking dare you offer me a bitten sandwich? Do you guys, are you getting me? Are you getting me guys? Are you fucking getting me though? That shit just still triggers me. And it's not any fault of her own. She was just asked that she didn't want it. She's like, do you want it? But why did, but my thing is that I think what's trigger, what triggers me guys is that back then, I didn't have the self-esteem that I have now. So I was like, okay, I'll take it. Like, I would never fucking do that now. Like, ew, like how, like how dare you? You know what I, do you got, are you guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. What? <laughs> you offered Malika a what? Mm -mm. Mm. Mm. People are who they are. I accept people for who they are. Whatever your personality is, you can be the most fucked up person in the world. That's you. That is you. Now, am I going to deal with you? That's different. But... For some reason or another, I'm sure you guys do this, I go back and get mad at my 17-year-old self. And I'm like, what the fuck were you doing? Do you know what I mean? And it's not right to do that because that's who I was. That's who I was. And I did the best that I could with what I had there at that time. And it's not right to pick on little things like that when I did so many things right. Do you guys get it? You guys get it? I know where my triggers come from. Guys, very important to get to know yourself. And if you're still running away during quarantine, you're making a big mistake. We're in the house for a reason, guys. Use it. I'm pulling shit apart. What? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Fuck that. I love going in. I love getting the mirror going in. I'm like, ooh. Oh, I got another story for you. Ooh, damn it. That 
fucking story repeated itself in my 30s, in my, in, I was like 34. Mm. It repeated itself. And I was like 34. Tell you about it in my book, though. Tell you about it in my book. Not even, but do you guys see how peeling back those layers, you get to, and I talk about this in my self-esteem book, you have to pinpoint where your triggers are. You have to. And you can't be mad at your your different levels, different stages. You can't go back and be like, I was stupid at 18 and all that. There has to be some way to make peace with your the younger version of yourself. Even if that was yesterday. Some of y'all doing shit, did, did shit yesterday. <laughs> oh my God. Some of y'all out in these streets. Mm. That happened yesterday though. Talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be mad at your yesterday self for doing some shit, uh, right? Whether it was calling your ex or sleeping with your ex, tricking old. I don't know what y'all doing. I don't know what y'all doing. But my point is, don't go back there and start being mean to that, you know, whatever that mind frame was then, that's, that's what it was. That's what it was, guys. That's what it was. And you have to, you have to recognize it and work on all this stuff. It just doesn't happen. Just because you're you're getting older doesn't mean like, oh, I'm wise. No, this dumb motherfucker's at 80 years old. They still doing shit. They still doing it. Mm-mm. Guys, I'm telling you. With the shit that be going on around here. We pull back layers. We pull back layers. Imagine how much stuff you have that you just ignore. And you're going through life talking talk about trying to get a girlfriend. Like, ew. Are you serious? Why are you trying to date and you don't even, you haven't pulled back your own layers? Because guess what? In a relationship, all my shit that I, the little bit of shit I just talked about, that comes out. That comes out. Somebody's going to trigger that shit again. And I'm going to think back to Oh my gosh, tuna fish sandwich on the bus. Do you, do you guys get me? What? This is why I never went to a psychiatrist. I tell, look, send me to a psychiatrist. I'll break down her shit. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> mm. Somebody want to know what my Mercury sign is? Guess. It's so obvious. My Mercury sign is obvious, guys. Don't get fooled by the Mercury. The aspects is what matter. If you have a Mercury in Leo, doesn't mean you're going to be authoritative, right? Depending on what's with energy. We're talking about energy, what energy is coming to and from that planet. I have a Mercury in Libra, guys. You knew that. But... Guess what my Mercury square is? Mars. All right, do you drink your melon juice? <laughs> mm. Guys, I swear. <sighs> All right, are we ready for a salad? I think so. All right, I'll be back. <laughs> Let me scoot to the refrigerator. <laughs> Are you ready? What kind of dressing should I get? If this is mustard, honey mustard. Oh my gosh, I got so much shit in here. All right, we're gonna do honey mustard. Somebody asked my age, how old am I? Help these people out. Somebody want to know how old I am. You know how old I am. All right, here we go, guys. Wait a minute. Let me look at this. It says honey mustard. 
I shouldn't be eating honey because those poor little bees. Oh, and I should get another one. I don't know how I got that. Wait, I'll be back. I feel bad for the bees. There we go. Look at that. There's my age up on the screen. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Vinaigrette. Vinegar with, with mustard and grape juice. Fancy schmancy. All right, guys. I want you to think about the stuff that's important. You think that your triggers are not going to come up in your relationships? Are you nuts? That's always the issue. You're like, oh, we're starting to fight. You're starting to fight because there's shit that's popping up in there. And guess who it's starting with? You. Starting with you. Because that person you're with is probably your mirror and it's coming out. It's coming out. You need to clean up your shit for looking for love. Oh, I'm looking for a relationship. Why? Why? What's wrong with the relationship in the mirror? Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do the work. You guys don't want to do the work. You don't want to put in the work. Imagine how beautiful it is to meet someone who's been putting in like seven years of work on themselves. They've just been working on themselves. You get the best version of them. How fucking fabulous is that? Are you kidding me? If I meet somebody and they haven't worked on themselves, oh, <laughs> are you crazy? You're not unloading your bullshit on me. I am not your mama. I'm not your mama. No. No. No way. No way. No way. Oh my God. <laughs> the dress and just was like, Pop. And normally, see, normally I don't really use dressing. Um, I use avocado and I looked everywhere for avocado today and I couldn't get one. I use avocado and uh, that's pretty much it. <gasps> I forgot my olives. Damn it. Oh wait, I forgot something else too. I'll be right back. I have this defrosting. You know what I have? These are chickpea falafel, shaped like hearts. Yum! Ooh, let me close my legs. <laughs> Guys, you have to get through your shit. And I want you to think about this. When you get off this live and you're going on chatting with people for no, no apparent reason because you're like bored or something, you know, think about 50, every time you chat with somebody, $50, is it worth it? Nope. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Wasting your energy. Just wasting it. Hoping that you get it back. Hoping what they like you. Nah. It's not the time right now, guys. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's really a reflective time. It's a reflective time. Get your shit together. That's what I'm doing. Look at all the silence in here. I love it. I love, I love peace. I love peace. <sighs> all right, here we go. <laughs> mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nice. What are you guys eating for dinner? Or wait, what time is this? Way past dinner. This is my late dinner because I'm up late. It's 9.42. Yikes. I just wanted to chat with you guys because you send me so many notes like, oh, how can I do that? I'm thinking like, why are you giving these people the energy? Why are you doing that? For what? Why? You know, why? Somebody said they had a plate full of ribs. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. 
that poor animal needs his ribs to protect all his organs, and you just rip them out and put them on a plate. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh, my gosh. That's terrible. That's terrible. So I'm working on my triggers. I will not eat a sandwich to save my life. <laughs> you know what I do? With sandwiches, I pull them apart and make a little salad. If people look funny, I'm like, I'm not fucking with the sandwiches. It's just a trigger that I have from, from childhood. It's just a trigger. I remember I was dating this guy and he was like, let's go out and get some sandwiches. And I was like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> It was so offensive. I was like, oh my gosh, a sandwich? That's what I'm worth? Like a sloppy sandwich? Like, look, look, I'm telling you guys. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh -uh. You have so many triggers and you don't know, even know where they come from. You get in a relationship and it comes up and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? The mirror. The mirror's waiting for you guys. The mirror's waiting for you. This is called self-care. This is self-love. Discovering self because somebody else is going to do it. That person you're in the bed with, they're going to see all that shit. And you're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. I'm trying to read your stuff, but I, I don't have my eyes on it and it's just going fast. Mm. The best. Animal free life, guys. Animal free life. Incredible. There's a, a Taurus woman, and she's nice, but she's a gossip, you know? She works in the laundromat, so I didn't want to give her too much energy today, so I just leave, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, what is that exchange worth? I started thinking, like, nah, let me get the hell out of here, put my clothes in, leave. And she started gossiping with somebody else. I don't like that shit. Now I'm very, very, you know, just paying attention to what the waste is, the, the energy waste. And this is how people get into your business, too. You wonder how they get in. Because you're talking to them for 10 minutes for what? What are you doing this bullshit chit chat for? Mm -mm. Some of you guys too, you're wasting your time with chasing different zodiac signs that you may get turned on, maybe they turn you on sexually, maybe they're exciting, maybe you're kind of like more level, more boring, <laughs> and they're more exciting and you think that's what you need, you know what I mean? And you don't understand your true personality. This is what I do when I do the love chart readings. I've told so many people, I've seen that, you know, they were Geminis and shit, I'm like, why are you even doing that? Like, you were, you're, you're not even equipped to handle someone who's mental and floaty and detached, like you're more nurturing with all this cancer, like what are you doing that shit for? And they didn't understand it. They just kept going back to the 
to all these excited, like all, all these people who are erratic, erratic, you know? I was like, you keep doing that for years, for years. Pointless. Yikes, guys. Are any of you guys in New York City? I see somebody in New York, somebody's in upstate. I went to college in upstate. I am getting ready for Scorpio season. I got a whole series coming for you guys. I'm gonna do a video every day. It's really exciting. I'm bringing on some stingers who are going to be guests on my channel, who are fabulous. Um, I can't wait. I feel like everything was canceled because of this pandemic, but Scorpio season is not fucking canceled. We're not doing that. We're going we're gonna to go in. We're going to talk about some really good things. It's going to jumpstart your evolution. You know? I think the reason why I'm able to be so successful in my transformation is because number one, nobody's allowed in here. It's a little easier when you don't have people constantly in your face. You know what I'm saying? It's a little easier. I meditate. My whole morning is about exercise. That's what I do. Exercise. We get physical, we get mental, we get all our shit together. Um, but there's no, no one that's allowed in here to disturb me. A lot of you live with people, you've got enemies in your own house. And I know how that feels. I know how that feels. It's a struggle. Then you've got to really, that's why meditation is so important. Because I can block anybody out. You can be sitting next to me talking some bullshit. I swear, I'll just shut down completely. Shut down. Shut down. But it is easier when nobody's around. Sal is banging. <laughs> and it's not like people are purposely trying to shut you down. Now, some of them are. <laughs> I really don't honestly think, for the most part, your parents are trying, like hating you secretly and things of that nature. People get comfortable with your insecurity. The girl on the bus that I grew up with, she was comfortable with me being insecure. So she picked at me. She picked at me, the Taurus girl. She picked at mostly everybody who was insecure, even though she was really insecure. <laughs> oh, how she turned out, guys. Look. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for her, but she's a mess. However, it's not like your parents purposely want to fuck up your life. Maybe some of them do. I don't know your parents, but I, I want to be positive and think like they just want the best for you. People get comfortable when you're insecure because they have, you are easily manipulated. Like you can, they can get what they want from you. You know how a parent is with a little kid, you know? They know how to talk to you where they can get what they want because you as a child, you want parents' approval, you want to be loved, you know? And um, when you're insecure, people get comfortable 
depending on what crowd you're in, you know what I mean? Like if you're the fat girl in the cute girl crowd, they feel comfortable with you being fat because they don't have to compete with you for men. They, you know, they, they already think they're better than you. You're not really going to speak up for yourself. There's something that happens in that body, in that insecure body, but let you lose some weight <laughs> and grow your edges and shit out. What? Oh, things have changed. Oh, things have changed. Let you get some self-esteem. Like, oh, I can do that too. They're like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? I had braces when I was little. I had a childhood illness. I had rheumatic fever. My whole body shut down. And my jaw collapsed. So I had to have my mouth wired. Um, because I couldn't get braces yet. I had to wait till my small, my teeth fell out and got my big girl teeth. So I, my jaw was wired. And then um, when my baby teeth fell out, I was able to get braces. So I had braces for very, almost five years and I got them off early. That's how messed up my, my, my situation was. Do you know, <laughs> when Malika got her braces off, now this is fun fact. I never smiled in pictures before that because my teeth were such a mess. Like, but when I got in eighth, the middle of eighth grade, when I got my braces off, and the first person to say some bullshit was that Taurus girl. You smile too much. Bitch was jealous as a motherfucker. What? What? Now we cover girl shit. <laughs> yes. Cover girl type shit. <laughs> I'm telling you. And did she purposely want it to be mean to me? I, probably not, you know, but she was comfortable with that version of me who never smiled, guys. Do you, is it clicking for you? You get it? Yes. When the motherfucking braces came off, she was the first one with some mouth. You, you smiled too much, but shut up. I couldn't stop smiling and my shit like boom, boom, boom. She's mad as fuck. She's not the only one. I'm just using her as an example. I'm gonna let you go to bed. I feel terrible about Chadwick. I guess only because he, you know, when there's a transition, you feel some kind of way. Beautiful man, um, respectful, and my age too. No, no, it's 43. Yeah, my age, 44. Young, you know, but um, no resistance. You know, he was sick for a long time, no resistance now. He's doing fabulous. Doing fabulous. Guys, please go on his page and show some love. I know his family's checking it. They need all the support they can. You know, lose your son and things like that is hard. Very good actor. Very good actor. And not just a kind person. Like, I share an energy with him. I think that's why I feel some kind of way. When you share energy with somebody, like, you know, it just it stays. It stays there. You know, energy can't be created or destroyed. You just transform it. So it's like, you know. I wish this chat was bigger. <laughs> All right, guys, 108 of you. I want you on his page. And you just write rest in power or anything positive because I know, like, it's difficult. You know, if I transition, I want y'all blowing up my fucking page. Blow that shit up. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm still getting through the salad, y'all. The raw vegan life. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm getting out of here. I have charts to do and a lot of studying. Make sure you go to my website. Um, I have amazing stuff in my shop. Get a chart reading. I'll break shit down for you so you don't waste your time. <laughs> mm. And what else is going on? I think that's it, guys. This is how much we got left. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining me. Is it Saturday? I don't know what day it is. <laughs> I'm not going to bed, but you are. I'll be up writing my little heart out as I do every night. That's my son in the 10th house and my Mars in my sixth house. I can't be lazy if I wanted to be. If I just wanted to sit around, my Mars would be like, what are we doing, what are we doing? We got lists and everything. You can't even see what's going on down here. <laughs> Books, lists, everything. All right, guys. Have a good night. <laughs>